guys, I'm Manage Designs and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you the process that I'm going through for making my corset, which will be going on the, as the undergarments for my Snow White from Mirror Mirror cosplay. This is by no means a tutorial, it's just me showing you the process of me going through making it. So to begin, I am using the Truly Victorian pattern from the 1880s, TV110. This pattern was recommended to me multiple times by friends and other costumers as a really good undergarment and a pretty simple pattern to put together. Something that I've already gone and done off camera is put together a little mock-up of the corset. So here's the full thing opened up, not laced, with the busk and all the boning channels in there. I did realize pretty quickly that this particular size that I was using was a little bit too small. I probably should have done a size up, so that's what I'm going to do. This was a size D, and I'm going to be doing size E with a different cup size as well, just to keep everything balanced. So now that I have the mock-up figured out, I know what I'm doing, and I have everything figured out what sizing I'm doing, let's go ahead and make this corset. Welcome to the voiceover section of this video. So as you can see, I am using a rotary cutter. This is actually my first time using a rotary cutter. I received two for Christmas. One is for multiple different kinds of materials, including paper, which is why I'm actually cutting around the actual size I'm using instead of just cutting around the piece or folding it under to my size. So I use the rotary cutter and the mat here. You'll see my other rotary cutter that's just for fabric a little later, but I just cut out the pattern pieces as instructed and as I did round the first time around when I did the mock-up. And there's all the pieces because I'm not gonna show you how I did every single one because that would make this video very, very long. The first thing I did on the sewing part of this cutout piece is to actually mark where I'm going to be placing the busk. The busk goes on the center front of this garment, and I got my busk pieces from Farthingale's Corson Tree Supplies, which is actually pretty local to me, so the shipping costs were not very bad at all, and the quality is top notch. It's also where I got all my boning. Here you can see that I'm marking out where the openings are gonna have to go in my seam allowance. And here you can see that I'm sewing based on those markings, leaving little gaps and starting and stopping all over again. This was quite a process so that the little busk clasps would have room to actually come out of the front of the, of the corset. Now I'm just going to press everything so it's nice and flat and clean. You still can't see those uh, bus holes that I have in there, but I can assure you they are there, but the idea is that you're not supposed to see them as holes. They are just little gaps in the seam allowance. So I push everything to one side, which makes pressing a whole lot easier when it comes to pressing it flat like so. This is the last time I actually got to use my old iron as it got replaced halfway through this project. So say goodbye to my little green iron. It did its best. And I'm finally slipping all the busks into place. This took a little bit of nangling here and there, but I eventually got it in there. It just had to sit in the seam allowance absolutely perfectly. And to keep it in there, you just top stitch it into place. Easy peasy and not too bad to do. Just, you know, it crashed into my wall a little bit because the busk is longer in the space I have behind my machine. Now it's time to work on the opposite side of the center front and the opposite side of the busk, which is done very similarly, just not with the gaps in the seam allowance. It's just flat seam allowance. It's just a normal seam in this situation. And then I just mark where the little holes have to go later. As you can see, I have my other busk piece ready to go for a reference and thank God I did it first. That's usually how you have to do it, just so you can do everything nice and evenly. As you can see here, I'm lining everything up so that I can figure out where my little holes need to go. Same with the pencil again, as I can erase it later if I make mistakes, because this is the center front of my bodice and I don't want things to be seen. I used my oils to all to punch the holes and it did a pretty good job. For the most part, I didn't have to force the pieces from the clasps too hard. They, they went in there pretty simply after a little bit of pressure. But you know, my all, my all did its job quite well and this was the point of no return as there are now holes in my front. And now a finished busk piece. And the same as the front, I just top stitched it right into place using my zipper foot and being very careful of the wall behind me because you know, it, it, not enough space behind my machine. There really isn't. It's, it's very inconvenient and made some of this a very difficult project, more than it needed to be. Once the busk is done, it's time to add on the other pieces. There were several seams on this one, as you saw with all the pieces from before, and basically they go on by sandwiching the lining piece and the main body piece 
onto the piece that you did before and repeating it over and over again and again being careful of that wall has gotten away a bunch. But as you can see, that makes the seam a very strong seam and you just simply press it again with my old iron and my lovely little pressing ham, which makes this job so much easier and so much nicer to do because the, it just gets that perfect curve because the corset is very curved as it is meant to fit over a body. So I'm not a point where the corset pieces are all put together, all six panels on either side, busts put in, and all the top stitching on every little seam is on there, including the top stitching that holds the back closed. So now it's time for me to go and put in boning channels so that I can put the steel boning in. So there'll be two bones on the back on each side, so four total that are like this, and that's just so that the back is nice and strong when I put the lacing in there. So I guess it's time for me to uh, top stitch in some bone channels. Woo. And top stitch I did. I had my see-through ruler on hand so I could keep measuring to make sure that my top stitching was accurate. Some areas were a lot easier to top stitch than others because, well, I had the actual seams or the edge of the corset as a guide and my presser foot as well. So I could measure it based on that. But other areas were not quite as simple as this. It's always also really handy to have your bones right on hand so you can make sure everything's accurate. Now, this area is where it gets a little tricky because I can't really use the gauges on the bottom of my machine as a gauge here at all. So I had to just be very, very, very careful and also measure and double check a whole bunch in order to do this. I had the bone also on hand so I could kind of reference it and look at it and also take a look at the other boning channel. So I just wanna make sure it was as accurate as possible because if I mess this part up, it could really mess up the whole back. And that is, that is not about what I wanna do. So I just was very careful and took my time. But it turned out pretty okay. The bone fit quite well and everything lined up in the end. So thank gosh. And then for the rest of the channels, it was just about following the presser foot along the seams and the top stitching that I had already put on before. Not a very hard process, but a little on the tedious side because there are so many seams and you want to be nice and clean at the end. In the end though, I think I did a pretty good job and I'm pretty pleased with it, so can't complain. I now have all the boning channels sewn into the main corset and a little kitty who's complaining a lot because I'm talking. And I have it all nicely pressed out with my brand new iron. And I now just put the bones actually into the boning channels. I also need to start marking where all the eyelets are going to go, which I do plan to thread cover after because I am not very strong. So when I place eyelets in here, they don't tend to stay very well. So I'm going to also sew them in. So it'll make it nice and keep it a bit stronger. Here you can see that I am using the original pattern to actually mark where the eyelet holes are going to go with another pencil again, because if I make a mistake, I can erase that, theoretically at least. It was actually very interesting because up until this moment, I didn't realize that on this pattern, the eyelet holes are not completely evenly placed. Around the waist, the placements get a little closer and a little farther depending on where it is. So that was just a little interesting note that I wanted to point out. So if you notice that later, that was actually how the pattern is. You can see it a little bit right here that some areas are just a little closer than others. I thought it was pretty neat. So I've made quite a bit of progress on my corset. All the boning channels are done now, which is really nice to have finished and out of the way because that's a little bit on the tedious side. And I've also finally gotten all of these lovely little uh, eyelets put in. Now you see, the thing is, I don't have very good tools for putting these in. Um, compared to my friend Cynthia and Silk Cosplay, who got all 28 eyelets put in in about half an hour when she made her corset like this, this took me maybe like three, and that's only the first few. I still have a whole other <laughs> side to do. My tools aren't great. I have stabbed myself in the finger multiple times. Having the right tools for the job is very, very helpful. I just happen to not have them. 
it works. They don't go in quite as clean as I'd like. Luckily, I plan to thread cover these after, but uh, this is a thing. <laughs> not an ideal thing either. This is, this is not fantastic. So I'm, I am gonna continue to do them because even if I order the tool for it, it will take a while to get here. I'd like to get it done, but this is a process. Oh gosh, and what a process it was. Uh, if I were to give this a rating, it would probably be about two out of 10 because it works, but it's really inconvenient and very slow. As you can see, I started off by using my awl, which was actually far smaller than the size of the eyelet. So that wasn't very helpful, but it was good for just getting that initial hole and in the accurate placing, according to the little dots I put on there. Uh, but Still not the most ideal because it'd be nice to just punch a hole and have that be the end of it. Uh, I ended up using my snips to kind of snip some threads out of the way on the fabric and also kind of used it as a way to kind of force the hole bigger. I honestly had to keep going back in with the awl here and there and use another tool that I have that's meant for creating holes that wasn't strong enough and try to use that to kind of force the hole to be bigger. It was not a good process. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on it because I sincerely do not recommend anyone try this method. It works, but you're probably gonna hurt your hands in the process and I don't wanna see you guys hurt your hands. So yeah, two out of 10, just because it worked and it could have been worse. So yeah, don't, don't do this method, please. Try to get the right tools. I'm definitely going to now. So if you have any tool recommendations, please uh, leave them in the comments because Gosh, do I ever need new tools for putting eyelets in? The only benefit of it taking so long is that I got through several episodes of Bridgerton, if not all of them, while doing it. And it wasn't that awful because, you know, it was kind of a nice little relaxing thing to do after work, but yeah, my hands were still sore. Would not, would not recommend. absolute eternity to do. It takes forever. But I got it in there. And just all the rest to go. So as of last night, I now have all the eyelets put in to the center back area of corset. So now I'm going to do something that I've already actually also started last night, but I just didn't film yet. But I'm going to start thread covering the eyelets. And that's because I just want it for aesthetic purposes, but also to make sure the eyelets are really in there. And I don't really like the gold considering the busk has silver on it, so we're just we're just gonna thread cover them with white because I plan on detailing this corset with white after anyway. I'm gonna get doing that now, and um, hopefully it'll take a little less time than actually putting the eyelids in there because that took a mild eternity. This part was honestly one of the more relaxing parts of doing the entire corset, and I really really enjoyed it. And it just added a little extra oomph to the final thing. As you can see, I'm actually watching Abby Cox's video about making her corset, which was just a really fun coincidence. So, you know, worked on mine while watching her work on hers. Um, but yeah, this was a really relaxing part and I ended up really enjoying it. And it's just a little simple little stitch that goes around the eyelet, keeps it in place, keeps it nice and strong and ends up looking nice. So I really can't go wrong with this. And now all my eyelets are covered by thread in white so they'll match other things in the costume later on. And I'm honestly pretty happy I did this because it looks so much better than leaving it gold. It just matches the whole thing a little better. So now that I'm done each piece, it's time to put the boning into the channels that I've made. 
and I haven't actually taken them out of the mock-up yet. So they're all just kind of sitting there so I can keep them organized and don't mistake each one for each other because it's pretty easy because they're all similar lengths but all slightly different. So I'm just literally going to take them out of here one at a time and slip them into the right spot onto the good copy of the corset. Only ones that I actually had already done were taken out were the straight flat bones that go in the very back to keep the back nice and strong. So I'm gonna slip those in first. So each of my bones are spiral steel flat bones and they each have this little cap on the top to keep them from poking and cutting into the main fabric. And I prepared these beforehand when I was doing my mock-up so they'd be all ready but also so I would mock up would be more accurate. So now that I have it out, it's just a matter of slipping it into the good copy. And next up is to make the bias tape for the top and bottom to secure everything in place. I prefer to make my bias tape instead of purchasing it, but that's just personal preference. I also used my other rotary cutter, which is fabric specific, and my bigger cutting board since it makes, well, cutting out bigger pieces of diagonal pieces out a lot easier. And then it was time to take my bias strips and iron them into actual bias tape. This was the first time I got to use some of my new equipment, my new iron and my new little board mat, which soaks up all the heat from the iron. They work so well and it makes making bias tape so fast. This wasn't tedious at all. This was so quick. It was lovely. I love my new iron. And the bias tape is all snapped into place with my brand new little clips here. I've already gone and done the underside with a hand slip stitch, which I just need to press out a little bit, but now I just have to go do the other side and then repeat it for all the other edges with all the bias tape that I made yesterday. But now it's just time for some Netflix and hand sewing, I suppose, because this is gonna be a lot of work, but it's looking pretty nice. We're, we're closing in on the end here. What are you doing? What you doing, buddy? Yeah, but don't know, sir. Your Majesty, please no. This was honestly another really relaxing part of making this corset, hand slip stitching everything into place. And I only like plugged away at it every few days. I you would usually work on it after work. So, you know, spend like two hours here and there. So it actually took me quite a few days to actually get it done, but that's just because I took my time and tried to just kind of enjoy the process and not stress myself out over it. And of course I got through even more Netflix in this time, but I was done with Bridgerton at that point. So I guess it was on to the crown at this point. It's pretty good, you guys. You guys should watch, check both of those out. They're, they're really good. I now have the corset completely bound, all the edges. I now have the bias tape all hand bound on it, hand sewn in place. I'm actually pretty happy with how it looks. So most people would call the corset done at this point, but I've decided I want to go a little extra on this. And I'm gonna add on this little lace trim here. I have enough that I can also add it to the chemise and drawers after two to kind of tie it all together a little bit, just to add a little extra fun. But I think it would look really nice, kind of just like, kind of like that, you know? Just kind of chilling top like that. So yeah, that's what I think I'm gonna go ahead and do next. So more hand sewing time, but at least now it's not the complete bias binding. It's just likely just on the top too, so. I don't know, we'll see, we'll see how this goes. So I'm going to get started on that.
And with that, the lace is all applied. Not gonna lie, I'm pretty happy with it. It looks nice and consistent and yeah, I think it actually really ties this whole thing together and just kind of gives it a little extra oomph. And I also guess that means it's time to lace this up and put it on and show you guys how it looks. So this is the finished truly Victorian corset pattern on my body. And I've got to say, compared to the mock-up, this one fits uh, pretty perfectly, honestly. It's a good thing I went the size up and the cup size down because now it fits quite nicely. There's a little bit of room for ease down here, but that's perfectly okay because that's where my I have a pair of drawers and a chemise underneath, so it kind of gives a little room for those. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the fit of this. It's very, very comfortable. They're definitely like the myth about corsets being uncomfortable is definitely not true. And yeah, this just proves that because this is very comfortable. I can feel my posture doing better already, which is great, which would be perfect for being Snow White because she is a princess and has a very good posture. Overall, I'm really, really pleased with this. The shape it's giving me is just crazy. I am so happy with that. And yeah, let's, here's the, so that's the front look with the boss side, a little bit of space here, but that's okay. Back. And back at the front again. I'm really happy I ended up putting the lace trim all around the top because it actually kind of gives it gives it a little bit more personality, which I kind of like about it. I'm pretty I'm pretty pleased with that. So that's how I made this really wonderful corset as an underlayer for my Snow White cosplay. I hope this video has been interesting to you guys and be sure to like, subscribe, and all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next video, and as I continue to work on this particular project, which I'm really excited to keep moving forward on, because I mean, get one piece done, and suddenly you just want to get the rest done too. So uh, I guess I'll see you guys later.